So, before we start this video, I want to relay a brief anecdote. Uh, I told Fadul when I was editing this that I could, I, I was pretty sure I could present this entire dungeon in one single video. This is that video. Well, this is, this is promising. Yeah, this is the exact kind of thing you want to be introduced on. <laughs> so I guess I'll just introduce myself now. Hi, I'm Chaos Argate. That was supposed to be a, a subtle cue. Ah, we started as we mean to proceed. All right, so, so I I haven't been keeping up. Um, what, what's what's going on here? So this is the Ashlands. And we're here to kill a giant worm and take its heart. As you do. We're war. Like the, the horsemen of the apocalypse war. Right, right. And you've got and you've got Mark Hamill as like your uh, your navvy. Yeah. And and we we thought that the apocalypse was happening and we went to do apocalypse things, but the apocalypse wasn't happening and everyone was like, hang on, what the hell? And then war was like, wait, but I thought the apocalypse was happening. Somebody's framing me. And now we're out to prove our innocence. Alright, classic redemption story, got it. You know, our, our innocence, despite the fact that we are literally war. Anyway, so you may remember uh, from the first when we first entered the Ashlands that these, these worms are an instant kill if you happen to get caught. Oh, that's lovely. And, uh, and... You may also note that this is the first time that we do not have a chronosphere to get past these guys with. No slow-mo. So I guess we're literally just waiting for them to, like... Okay. I mean, in theory, we're literally just waiting for them to be out of the way. So you can start by just mentally tacking on about 15 minutes of that. Uh. Like, do they, do they at least, like, they're in a place, and then when you walk on the sand, they start moving over to you, so you can be like, oh, they're a, f they're a long way away, so it's safe-ish. I do want to point out, though, they put an autosave after the first room. That, that always raises a couple eyebrows. Yeah, that's one of those um, ominous signs. At least we're doing combat now and not that. I hope you like combat. I hope you really, really like combat. Like, combat is just... Just fuck me up with combat. Just, like, inject the combat directly into my veins. Give me those flowing, moderately well-animated... Uh, slightly generous hit-count combos. Just fuck me up. Oh, hey, this guy again. He's a big one. We are going to be seeing a lot of this guy. I mean, is, is he just going to be a thing for this whole area? These areas have had things. Well, it's not him we're worried about. It's the, uh, the guy behind him there. Huh. Is, is this a case of shoot the doctor? That's not really a doctor, per se. Right, but you, you know what I, you know what I mean, though. Yeah, those syringes are not going to be healing anybody. Yeah, this is more like shoot the, uh, the rocket dudes, or not shoot them, you know, go... Disable them before they shoot you. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't have to literally be a doctor. The, the doctor can be figurative. So do you remember our friend, the infinite use laser cannon that just fucking destroyed everything? How can I forget our friend, the infinite use laser cannon that just fucking destroyed everything? Well, this is his brother, the uh, infinite use uh, needle cannon that destroys literally everything. Nice. That was like a fun time. 
is it going to be used in as interesting and engaging a set piece as the laser gun was? Sort of? I don't like that when, when uh, as soon as you answered, we immediately went into double time. <laughs> so the way this cannon works is that you shoot a thing with R2, and then you press L2 to blow up the stake, which also hurts things. Can you shoot people with lots of stakes and then blow them all up at once? You sure can. Can you shoot a lot of people with a lot of stakes and then blow all of them up at once? You sure can. Is L2, does L2 blow up one of them or all of them? Uh, I think it's... I want to say it's burst. So if you... You can fire up to four stakes at once and then they all, and then they go off once you hit L2. Ah, okay. Well, so there are you know, slight limitations on the whole thing. Yeah, and that, but you get your ammo back, like, within a second of blowing them up. I mean, you did preface this whole thing specifically with the word infinite, which is a very deliberate word to use to describe a thing, I feel. Wait, do we have light puzzling going on here as well? Oh, no, absolutely not. This is a kill room. Okay, I, I just saw a, a cutscene of, of, a, of a crank being turned, I thought maybe. No, that was... that was the demons on the other side trying to get to us. There are a lot of needle cannons, are you expected to... like... lose them somehow? I mean, theoretically you could not have one, but then all of the other guys drop them too, so you know... So no, there is no there is no point at which you are ever expected to not have a needle cannon in here. Yeah, this is this is like the most heavy-handed way of saying, "Hey, use this damn thing, you idiot." I mean, and why not? Sometimes people just don't take hints. This is true. Like game designers will have nightmares about trying to get players to understand that they need to do a thing. So I guess just, just dropping a million of the same awesome weapon might do it. Yeah, I, this, th that's one way to do it. I'm used to seeing games where like you need to use like the thi uh, thing they want you to have to like open doors or whatever. You just, you just hit a gong with an axe. I mean, why not? That's badass. So did you like that last kill room? Because here's another kill room. Yeah, this this seems even more conspicuously like a kill room than the last thing that you literally referred to as a kill room. Yeah, this this is just straight up like a coliseum. Like in the in in the in the last video, we were talking about environments for stuff in action games not really seeming like anything, and it being very weird that you would be expected to do these things here, and then. Yeah, it's it's a kill room. This is this is an environmentally justified kill room. I can take a hint, game. So far, subtlety is uh not one of this game's, I guess, strong suits. No, uh, no, no, it, it, it is it is not. Subtlety was never even a concept that was under consideration for this game. Like, have you seen these character designs? Like, the main character is literally an embodiment of the apocalypse who has a giant flaming sword and can turn into a giant demon. And he has a gun. I, I, I mean, come on. We had the, we had the whole, the... Uh, what, what is it that we sum this up as? It was basically the World of Warcraft aesthetic but written to an action game. Yeah, yeah, I can see that, actually. And, like, honestly, it works. It's not, like... It's not bad. The game has a whole, like, style going on, and it sticks to it, and everything is, is consistent with that style. Yeah, I can appreciate a game that, like, wants to be loud and proud of what it is. Everything is, is looks ridiculous, but it doesn't feel wrong that everything looks ridiculous. 
Like there's you can have you can have a style where things look ridiculous and it does and it then it's stupid that everything looks like this, but this is not that. This is like ridiculous synergy. The only uh, thing you do have to occasionally watch out for is that there are like lava plumes that will pop up, and that will fuck you up if you're if you're standing on top of it when it happens. I, I mean, fair. Are are the lava plumes? Do they they come up in set places, or are they telegraphed? Yeah, you can see like the one right in front of us. Oh, I see. I get it. Do you know who can't take a hint? These guys, apparently. Uh, no joke. At some point in this video, they will spout the line, He can't kill all of us. Nice. Little self-aware nod from the writers there. I I'm glad, uh, at least one set of mooks understands that, uh, or, uh, voices their, um, opinion on the matter. All of his dialogue is like this, by the way. Hmm. And it it also works. Like this is a completely appropriate tone for this character in this game in this setting to take. That that's pretty great. So, uh, Fiddle, you at one point asked about a rival fight. I did. My god, is, are we going to fight this guy multiple times? Yeah, um, I don't know if I'd say we're going to fight him multiple times, but this is the closest you're going to get. This guy has a basically a carbon copy of uh, War and his assorted toys, so... Right, except he's on a horse. Oh, we can fix that. I mean, like... It's it's not it's not lost on me that we are we are a, literally a horseman of the apocalypse and we're the only one here not on a horse. That was pretty rad. Action games. Like, I wonder if each of these guys thinks, like, okay, I know he slaughtered the last, like, thousand, but I I feel good about this. It's my day. I'm I'm going to be the one who finally does it. I feel like that, that, that runs through everyone's mind, like, if they're taking part of, like, a big mob rush like that. It's, it's probably a little bit how, like, the random thugs in all the Batman Arkham games think. It, it has to be, like... Like, I got it, I, I, I know all those other guys, but I'm gonna be the one who finally crowbars Batman. Or Spider-Man, for that matter, that game did the exact same thing. In fact, it was, it was kind of ridiculous, the mobs in that game, because they were all, like... It had you believe that these that they were, they were just, like, petty crimes and muggings. And, like, oh no, there's an old lady getting mugs. And there's like 20 guys, like what the hell? Everyone really wants grandma's candy, I guess? Uh, anyway, this game used to be doing that, but now it's... We're having a proper fight here. Like, this is... I mean, I know we've been bullshitting over the whole thing, and we opened this video by saying, like, hey, this is, this is just gonna be like a whole video of sped up shit, but like, I'm digging this. I mean, to this guy's credit, he was the, uh, pretty much the only thing that puts up a real fight here. I mean, you could you could see that every time I got hit, he was knocking, like, an entire health bar off. I saw you chugging those heels. But hey, he really did get to look you in the eye when you killed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Nice. Okay, bye. That horse was not amused. Oh, you misunderstand. That that's our horse. Wait, what? What do you think you're doing? That thing's lost its mind. Kill it. Not by 
I said. Finish it. Go on. I won't fight you. I get the reference. But yeah, it's like they're, they're, they're going for this rousing emotional tone here. And that is the first thing that I think in this whole game that doesn't fit. <laughs> so uh, horseback combat is pretty straightforward. Uh, the only things you can use are your sword and the gun. So you get a ranged option and you get the melee option. Uh, when you're on horseback, your sword does, like, three times as much damage as usual. I mean, if we, if we were going for anything resembling an actual approximation of actual physics, then, like, swinging a big huge thing while also being moved at a very high speed would make it hit with a, a bigger impact. Anyway, so now, so now that we have some transportation, let's fuck up this worm. About time. That's definitely like a, a classic video game set piece rule is that you have an area where you just get constantly harassed by the same thing the whole time and then you finally get to kill it and it's always great. So the short version is that you want to you want it to trigger the chase and then once it jumps up out of the sand it'll expose its little like nose thingy and you just fucking riddle it with bullets. Okay, seems standard. There is a uh, very, very little depth in terms of horseback combat, so. And then, did you just send the horse into its mouth? Yeah. What about it? So, do you just get ruined, like, whenever you want now, or? Pretty much. Nice. There are some places he can't go. Like, typically anything indoors is, is a no-go for ruin. But, generally speaking, yeah, you, you can just summon him anywhere, at no cost or anything. See, in, in the last dungeon I was saying when we were fighting the boss that it was, that it was like, it was trying to go for what would eventually come to be called the Platinum Boss Fight aesthetic. But that was pretty much it. Like, that whole thing could have just been overlaid with rules of nature and nobody would have battered an eyelid. Yeah, that, that reminded me a lot of, uh... That, that ray from the end of the prologue? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Literally the exact thing. Let's just, like, edit, edit in a clip of Boris going, Yes, yes, we got it wide open. Just to, in case anybody wasn't being clobbered over the head enough with this reference. What I'm saying is that this is, like, good action game shit. There is a way to do cutscene attacks in action games that is not, like, completely at odds with the whole rest of the game. And that is it! But yeah, if you're curious, if you look underneath the uh, the UI, you can see the, uh, uh, the, what's his face, Ruin symbol is grayed out. That's how you know whether or not you can summon him. Oh, okay. No indoor horses. Oh, and you can just summon him uh, uh, anytime? Anytime. That's handy. As long as long as he as long as he's available to be summoned in a given area, you can you can just call him up. Hmm. Anyway, it's time for another shooting gallery. Everybody loves those. See, we've segued directly from like the good shit into the the moderate shit. 
this is like the the great tragedy of this game is that it's it's so obvious that they've got a lot of real good stuff, and they they seem to think that they don't have enough stuff, and they have all this padding in the middle. Well, it's not like ooh, the the shooting bits didn't seem like they were completely atrocious to play through, so. I can't even hate it that much, it just seems kind of a shame that they couldn't be on the, the quality high the whole time. Yeah, like this 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 feel this looks like it'd be a pretty fun power trip, but maybe it goes a little long for what it actually is. Honestly, it's just boring. Like the like the laser one was fun because you were in the middle of a kill contest and it was like, oh hi, yeah, now I've totally got this. But like this is just, hey, here's a here's a thing full of enemies, shoot them all. I mean, a lot a lot of video games will at at some point will have at least one rampage set piece like that, but it'll usually be fairly short, and there will usually only be one of them. Like I'm I'm thinking of like you know, the the one that immediately came to mind was Gears of War two had that. There was one little set piece involving just you on a big slow thing with a very big gun just mowing down thousands and thousands of locusts. And it was great, lots of people used it to grind the very stupid achievement that was in that game, forgetting I think it was a hundred thousand kills across all modes. Some people just don't understand achievements. I feel like I could write several books about achievements, specifically about achievements. Not even like game design, just achievements. I mean, yeah, there's a whole lot you can say about them. I feel like I could, I could run a website that's something like Microtransaction Zone, but for shitty achievements. I'd have snappy icons for all those stupid complaints and everything. So here's Volgrim. We got a lot of money out of that whole thing. Yeah, we did. So this is the end of the dungeon, and Volgrim's here because the game is begging you, please, please buy the upgraded bullets. Please. I mean... I can I can see why they would be a good thing to have, but is it is it actually doing that? Uh, it's it will be as soon as you see, as soon as you walk into the next room. I mean, does does the game pop up a thing being like, wow, it would be really good if you had this exact upgrade, which you coincidentally can go and buy right here? It does not. It probably should, but it does not. Because yeah, I've 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 got some side eye for that kind of a design. That seems like a thing that shouldn't happen. See anything you like? We see a lot of things I like, Volgrim, but unfortunately, we do not have very many souls left. Seem very agonized over that last six hundred souls. Eh, whatever. I'm sure you'll have more again in no time. So how much extra damage are we talking exactly? It's hard to say. It's not a significant upgrade, but believe me when I say that literally any extra damage. Wait, 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 wait. We were that this is blatant cutscene in Gongruzi. I won't stand for this. I'm just curious if it's gonna keep you on the horse after the cutscene's over. Search your feelings. You know the truth. Anyway, the last 10,000 guys didn't manage to do this, but you know. This lot are gonna do it. They're, they're not even moving, come on. I thought, oh, that one's moving. No, that was just evil Mark Hamill. They're all just like staring at the giant worm, I think. 
they're all just standing there waiting to be cut down. This is like fucking Dynasty Warriors. Oh, don't worry. They're going to be taken care of very shortly. Is that the Wilhelm scream? I kind of feel like we should be on the horse for this. I, I'm, I mean, like in the in the cutscene. So. This is like the other thing, but with more numbers, right? This is exactly like the other thing, with more numbers. And, and there's one or two small wrinkles that come with it. But yeah, by and large, that's what it is. So you gotta break it's, break the, the muzzle? Yeah, so first of all, we gotta break off that big iron mask it has. And so this is why you, want, you really, really want those bullets. Because... After, in between each phase of this fight, the Stygian just runs and hides, and it summons like three or four of these little worms. And he doesn't come back out until you kill all of these little worms. That seems like a tactical error on his part. Also that too, yeah. You'd have a much better chance if you were fighting with the little worms. Yeah. What's the problem with the with the worm physiology? It's got all them teeth and no brain. That's why he's gonna lose. So what? Three phases? Uh, I again, like I said, this is this is all damage based. So it's not necessarily that he has three up and downs. It's he, he goes around for a little bit, and after so much time, he dives back underground. Uh, that's, yeah, that's lame. That's not good video games. It, it just seems like in, in, it's intrinsically a failure if we have this kind of a boss fight, which is like the big climactic encounter that this whole thing has been leading up to, and the immediate impulse of somebody doing a let's play of it is to present it in fast forward. Like, that's just wrong. That's one of these things. Yeah, but you're gonna get to hear Mulgara's music over it, so you know. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a pretty inspired choice. Yeah, that that's pretty good. Any any particular any particular arrangement of it? I I gotta know. I'll look around. I mean that was, Mulgara was a, was a fight that you know, it, it had it had the phase thing going on and it had a couple of real like it was pushing its luck with the stop and go somewhat and it had the in fact now that I think about it Mulgara it absolutely was a fight that summoned the small worms and then fought alongside them. Also, what the hell was that drift on the horse? You all saw that, right? Oh, well, that was video games. Well, I guess there's nothing left to do but get the Stygian's heart back to Samael. Still, all these hearts, the power he'll get from them. I hope you know what you're doing. I don't think anybody knows what we're doing. Well, we're returning the Stygian's heart to Samael. But yeah, the the fight was kind of nonsense, but you know, I can't complain about the the cutscene that followed it. But yeah, so that's uh that's the Ashlands. That that did feel that did feel like a Skyward Sword overworld dungeon. 
honestly, given the, the, the build up to the whole thing, we're like, hey, we've got an hour of video and we've like compressed it down into 30 minutes. Given the expectations based on that, I am honestly like pleasantly surprised. It's one of those things where if you had to sit through and play the actual game, you would probably be a lot less generous towards it. This is true. Man, somebody should invent a whole form of entertainment in which we present video games in a much less mind-numbing way for the entertainment of others. We should get on that. 